This episode is brought to you by Blueprint Health. Blueprint Health is a measurement-based care platform for mental health providers. You can find out more about them by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprinthealth. And also this episode is brought to you by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com, the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers in private practice. They're who I use in my practice. Check them out at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the podcast. This is episode number 208 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Glad you're here. Glad you're with me on this journey. Hope your December is going well here as we wind down the year and uh, really kind of we're in the middle of, I guess you could say, the holiday season. I know for for me, I'm looking forward to taking some time off towards the end of the year. I usually take off the um, <clears throat> week between Christmas and New Year's uh, and don't see any clients in my office and just use that time to reflect and and um, you know, get ready for the new year. It's hard to believe that we're done with 2021 already. It just seems like this last year has just flown by. Um, And I don't know if that's because of all that we've gone through with COVID or what it is, or the fact that I'm getting older. But anyway, that's what's happened. So Anyway, I'm, I'm, I think this episode today is really appropriate for being one of the, the last episodes of 2021, and I have got with me the crew from Zenny Me, uh, Miranda Palmer and Kelly Higdon for this episode, and they are so much fun, and they we have just a really great conversation just about our professions and just where things are headed in our professions. And we talk about um, the things that are happening with tech companies taking over kind of the counseling field. And what I mean by that is just um, some of the things, the phenomenon of like uh, talk space and better help and all of those kinds of, uh, of companies we're seeing more and more of that. And so we have some really real conversations about that in this particular episode. So I want you to stick around and listen in on that. Plus, the um, Kelly and, and Miranda share kind of their story of how Zenny Me got started. Zenny Me has been, when I first got into this whole consulting space, um, they were one of the leader. Well, they're still one of the leaders, but they were one of the first uh, that I knew about uh, that was doing this kind of work. And so, um, anyway, I'm looking forward to you hearing from them, them, and hearing their story. Um, they're just uh, so much fun to be with. So, anyway, um, but before we get to uh, Kelly and Miranda, I wanted to ha- invite you to go over and check out the focus groups that I've got coming up in January of 2022. Um, Got a focus group. Next cohort is going to be starting on January the 13th. And a focus group or AKA, AKA mastermind groups are a way for you to get some group coaching and group support, um, for your practice, regardless of where you are in your journey, I think that mastermind groups and focus groups are one of the best ways to um, get feedback from others, be able to bounce ideas off of other people and learn from others. Um, the ones that I've had in the past, I've gotten nothing but good feedback from folks and it's a really good return on your investment in terms of getting that support. So I invite you to go over to practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group, and you can apply there and we'll start the conversation. And also, um, if you're interested in, in being part of a focus group, I'll be happy to for us to just email me and we can get on a quick phone call together and talk about all of that. But 
love for you to join. It's going to be a small group. Only six to eight people will be in the group. So it'll be time for us to be able to share and just talk about our practices and be able to learn from each other um, <clears throat> in this whole private practice space. So anyway, check it out, practicetherapy.com slash focus group. And also before I get to Kelly and Miranda, love for you to hear more from our sponsors, uh, Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com, and also Blueprint Health. And you can find out more about Blueprint Health at practiceoftherapy.com slash Blueprint Health, and they are a measurement-based platform for private practices and really helping you be more evidence-based in what you do. So uh, take a moment here to hear more about Therapy Notes and Blueprint Health. You know, as your practice grows, the systems and processes you have in place will keep your practice running smoothly. That's why it's important to have an electronic health record system that is specific to mental health providers. Therapy Notes is a complete practice management system with everything you need to manage patient records, schedule appointments, meet with patients remotely, create rich documentation, and bill insurance all right at your fingertips. Their streamlined software is accessible wherever and whenever you need it. They're who I use in my practice. And did I mention that they are one of the top-rated EHRs for mental health providers? Their support is also second to none. So be sure to check them out at practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. And be sure to use the promo code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months for free. That's therapynotes.com. And this episode is also brought to you by Blueprint Health. You know, one of the best ways to serve clients in your practice is through measurement-based outcomes. In fact, more and more third-party payers, aka insurance companies, are demanding measurable outcomes. And with more and more emphasis on good mental health, having a way to measure your outcomes just makes sense. Introducing Blueprint, the measurement-based care platform that administers scores and charts hundreds of symptom rating scales to give clinicians deeper insights into treatment progress. Ultimately, by helping, helping behavioral health providers to grow top-line practice revenue, increase clinician satisfaction, and deliver more effective care. So be sure and check them out by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprint health. And by going to that URL, you can also get your first month free. Again, that's practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprint health. Hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And, you know, uh, it's very rare that I get to hang out with rock stars, but I've got two rock stars of the private practice world with me, the one and only crew from Zenny Me, Kelly Higdon and Miranda Palmer. Welcome, you guys. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Thanks for having us, Gordon. I, I don't know if we're rock stars. We've just been around a long time. Yeah. So maybe. We're... <laughs> yeah. So I was so, so excited to, to be able to arrange this. And I thought it would just be fun. And it's turns out this is going to be the last episode of 2020. Ooh. So this is really special. But I think it would be great <laughs> for you all. The last episode of 2020. 2021. 2021. Oh, my Lord. Yes. <laughs> Is it 2021 already? Oh my God. <laughs> Boy, I missed out something somewhere. That's okay. It was yeah. totally worth skipping over. Yeah. Before. So, it, anyway, 2021. And uh, so I thought it would just be fun for Kelly and Miranda to tell the story of just kind of how they got started with Zenny Me, which was one of really one of the first organizations that I'm aware of that really jumped a headlong into creating a, an online space and online resources for those of us in private practice. And 
I know early on when I started uh, the practice of therapy, I really um, looked at what they were doing to kind of get my head around how to do this. But as I start with start every episode with everyone, Kelly, and Miranda, why don't you guys tell a little bit about um, well, this really, this whole episode is about how you landed, <laughs> where you've landed. So this might not be a great intro to that, but why don't we just jump in and tell you guys, tell a little bit about yourself and um, let's go with the story. I always love a good story. <laughs> well, we are both MFTs in California and uh, many people think that we were friends first. We were not. Um and because of our journey, I'd say we are passionate about uh, when it comes to partnerships and talking about that and being real and honest about what it takes to make those things work. So I'm sure that will come up in our story as we chat. But we did not really know each other when we started this business. <laughs> we have just l- lucked out. Well, I would say it's more than luck. I think it's a lot of uh, hard conversations, honesty yeah. and vulnerability and our own personal growth efforts that have made us what we are today. And now we count each other as family, but we didn't start out that way. Mm, Not great. at all. Yeah. I think that's where like when, when people ask like, how did Zinni me come to be? Like, where did that come from? For me, it starts before, um, like it honestly starts with like failing a licensing exam. Um, I failed a licensing exam by one point. It was the second licensing exam in California. And I took it right before I went to a family get together where like everybody knew I was taking the exam and I had to walk in and say like, oh, I I failed the exam. And this was, Mm -hmm. it was just mortifying. (laughs) Mm -hmm. their grandma's like there's something wrong with the exam and I was like no grandma like I failed it um but what I found very quickly as I was trying to navigate that process was that um I was just all alone in it there wasn't anyone else that I was part of in terms of schooling that was at the same place everyone was still working on their hours everyone I asked and said hey you know, I'm trying to figure out how to navigate this. I don't even know what study materials to buy. Like this is a huge investment for me to spend hundreds of dollars on something that I I don't even know if this is workable. And um, so started, I was actually teaching online and teaching people about how to do online study groups and then have this bright idea to do an online study group. And that's where I really started to um, get like fully immersed in the idea of online community. And that online community then led me into some consulting and into online marketing. And then that's how Kelly and I met. And so it was this very, Mm. like, I think sometimes uh, I get a lot of people who are like, oh, you decided to do, you guys decided to do business consulting or do this course because it was a way to like make lots of money or as a way to (laughs) get out of the therapy room or something like that. And it, It was never, not that we don't want to have a sound business, but it was always about where is the pain point? Where do we see people hurting? What's really not being said? What's not being talked about? Where are people feeling lost and confused and alone? Where are we feeling lost and confused and alone? And how can we like meet that need and like bring it together in a way that's really accessible to people? Right, right. Yeah, the, the thing I love about it is that, uh, in to echo what you say, I think if anybody in this, you know, kind of this private practice world wants to do a side gig or do something besides just one-to-one kind of face-to-face therapy, you better make sure it's something you have a, a passion about because it will go nowhere for you and you will yeah. be miserable doing it. And so I think you've got to have that passion. And, and I would say like, you need to not just love doing it, but take a look at the foundation of the thing that you're doing as your main gig first, because mm-hmm. whatever things that you are unaware of, whatever things you haven't taken care of in your main gig, you're going to replicate in your side gig. So if you mm-hmm. got burned out in your main gig, because you had poor boundaries, you didn't know when to say no, you weren't charging an appropriate fee. You were saying, you know, yes to insurance contracts that paid you $35 a session or whatever the scenario is. And then you don't resolve those mindset or money issues or boundary issues. 
you will absolutely replicate that in your side gig. That's supposed to help you escape (laughs) and supposed to help you get out of it. Yeah. Love that. So Kelly, what, what are your thoughts (laughs) on this? Yeah. When I think back on our story, it's interesting. When I coach people now, I want them to dream big. Like I want to, where are we headed? And I think it's because I didn't do that (laughs) when we started Zinni Me. Um, But life has pushed us to dream bigger and bigger. I think when I started it, it was just a passion project in some ways. So what many people don't know is that when Miranda and I started Zinni Me, it was I had hired Miranda to coach me in starting my practice. And I'm a very uh, type A kind of person and I do what I'm told and I did everything I was told. And I told Miranda, I was like, some of this stuff could be automated into a course. (laughs) Mm -hmm. She's like, yeah, uh, you want to work with me on it? And I was like, oh, that's so nice of you. And I really didn't believe her Um, because I was doing my practice. I was leaving my county job. And the interesting thing about that whole scenario is I didn't really have community where I lived. I had moved there, started my job and was still trying to find my way with community. And so my way of building my practice originally was with my website ranking and SEO and all of that kind of stuff. And I, I killed it, you know, like I went for it. And so when Miranda proposed this and then we decided to do it, I hadn't really thought of it becoming my full-time thing. And then, um, I had a baby, so it became more of a thing. And then, you know, we've had life changes, which have called us out to do more and be bigger throughout the entire kind of story of, of this journey. And, um, and I'm grateful for that. And that's what I bring to my coaching is, like helping people see bigger than they imagined because I'm real, you know, that's just a skill that I've had to develop over time that I hope to give to my clients as well. And in doing this, I remember we had the coaches um, and they had, and we do this exercise a lot. You, you can download it in our free community, this like perfectly imperfect day exercise. And I remember doing it of like, what does a good day of work look like? And I was not seeing clients. And I literally went back into my journal and I wrote in seeing clients because I was like, oh, Zinni me is not going to be a full. <laughs> no, I'm a therapist. I went to school to be a therapist. This is my calling. This is my gift, blah, blah, blah. I wrote it. I like literally did the exercise and went in and added it. Like <laughs> That's... <laughs> Um, and he, and, you know, here we are now, like I sold the assets to my practice and now this is what we do. And Miranda had her, has her own story with thinking like this Zinni me is not going to be the full-time thing. And here we are. And I wow. think, you know, sometimes people, you know, they make assumptions like, oh, you did this to get out of therapy. No, I hung on to my therapy practice for a very long time. Um, and, or we do it for, you know, we get all sorts of emails that we do it for money and well, yes, I, I pay a staff, I, you know, and that's all well and good, but I want to be part of a legacy of changing our field, you know, Mm -hmm. and that passion that you talk about Gordon is, is lit a fire under us, um, to push and push and push and lead. And I'm, it's interesting, like I'm seeing a bunch of new like therapist retreats pop up and stuff. And I'm so delighted because, you know, that's where we kind of, we've done that, like with the, we did most awesome conference with Joe and some other um, events of seeing the value of community and seeing how boot campers have connected and grown and What an amazing thing to see. And I know you said that we were the OGs, but I think (laughs) Casey Truffaut and Lynn Grodsky, a couple other people who are retired now really Mm -hmm. were, I think we were the first to really knock out of the park in terms of the online visibility piece, because Lynn and Casey, they had written books as well. They were doing the online stuff some, but not fully online. Miranda has more insight into that, but. I, th- yeah. I think they didn't do, I think the thing that was missing there and that 
they probably didn't address to very quickly was just the online community aspect of yes. things. Right. I think we, we understood how to help people really get to know each other in an online world before that was cool or normal and how to do it in a really like safe and lovely way. And, and it, and it's been really magical to watch over, you know, the last 11 years, watch therapists who had no knowledge of each other, come into a program, get to know each other, meet in the real world and become like best friends, <laughs> like mm-hmm. legitimately, like mm-hmm. people have become best friends and business partners and other things from through that, like community building. And I think it's because we've always really focused on creating a space where people get to really own what their values are as a, as a person and what their values are in terms of how they want to live their life. And then it makes it easier to kind of find your people. Like you can see in the light Mm -hmm. of them, here's what they're like, Hey, they have the same vision or they have the same um, energy that I do, you know, Mm -hmm. the same core beliefs. I think it's just neat to see the transformation of our field to be more community-based and to be intentional in these retreats or in courses or in other spaces of saying, we want to lift each other up, you know, in bootcamp, we have a saying, we don't compete, we stand out. Mm -hmm. And that is just a beautiful thing to see happening in therapist communities, because I feel that together we, we can keep this field alive and thriving at, because we have tech companies coming in and oppressing therapists and all these kinds of things. And we need each other to come together um, to hold on to really what we know is good therapy for our right, communities. Right. You know what? I had an aha as, as you all were talking about this is that what I think a phenomenon that we're seeing is that what we are doing online through community building is is kind of replacing trade organizations. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I know here in Tennessee, the Tennessee Marriage and Family Therapy Association, which is connected with AAMFT, is struggling. It just cannot seem to keep the momentum. And I think the reason for it is is just that there are the communities like you guys have created within Zenny Me and just the practice of therapy and all of that, where we're kind of pushing back against the convention of, oh, this is the way you should do it kind of kind of thing. And we're just saying, no, <laughs> we, you know, we're, there's another way to do this. And I think there's also like, it's not just there's another way, but like, hey, you know, organizations, we need you to hear us of what we're really looking for. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you, what are you really needing? So I'm going to, I'm going to call out and hopefully I won't get in trouble. So years ago, um, there was a professional organization and they were promoting a website company that was really exploitive to therapists. It made false claims. It misdirected clients. And that professional organization was getting like money and kickbacks for every therapist that they pointed in that direction. But, and you would talk with them, but the professional organization was like, well, we already have this relationship. We have this contract with this person or, oh, we don't really understand this. So you don't understand our profession enough to know what is good or not good in terms of being able to like point us in the right direction, but you're going to use your list and the, and basically like I paid to be on this list for you to give me misinformation Mm -hmm. and whether that was done intentionally or, you know, ignorantly or not, I think people are, are, are standing up and saying, no, I don't, I don't want that. Like, I really want to make sure that where I'm putting my money, the organizations are there are really out there to protect me and they have my highest and best always mm-hmm. in place. Mm-hmm. They are out negotiating for me, whether it's in terms of, of legal, you know, they're, they're pushing for legal and law change. They are um, pushing for discounts with organizations for me and, and helping to save me money on the things that I really need. 
Um, and it's, it's interesting, even in having talked with different associations um, and really wonderful people. And they're saying, well, you know, it's just hard because if I, if we say yes to this, then like maybe this over here, they might get mad. So, you know, I, I can't get this discount for my people over here. It's just, right. it's a, people are kind of stuck, but, but I think people are standing up and saying, Hey, where I put my time and where I put my money really matters. Mm-hmm. And here's what I need. And I think associations aren't pivoting quickly enough. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow. D- didn't know we were going to go there, but that is that is exactly <laughs> what we need to be talking about. But yeah. So, okay. So let me backtrack a little bit. The name Zenny Me. Tell us about that. So it goes back to the, um, the, the study group. Um, when I started the study group, it was on Yahoo and you used your email address and my email was zinny at yahoo.com, right? It's still there, but I don't check it. So mm-hmm. feel free to email me everybody. So mm-hmm. zinny at Yahoo, it was literally just a, a name that popped up in my head that was short. Um, Zinni, I'd had the email address for years at that point. So then when Kelly and I got together and started it, a lot of people knew me from the study group as like Zinni or what have you, like that was kind of thrown around there in terms of it just being part of my profile. And so people gave a suggestion like, oh, that would be super cool. Like to have a name that like, does it, you can like make it mean anything. And Zinni.com was taken and we went back and forth and there was like, even like a dot me's were just coming out. So we we're like, maybe we'll be zinny dot me. And then we decided it would be zinny me.com and we'd make up a word. Like, it's just ridiculous now looking back on it. It's hysterical. <laughs> um, and yeah, and now it's a search term. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now it yeah. like le- le- legitimately is a search term that people use. And, yeah. and it's a lesson in our boot camp on what not, how to name your business. You know, because you know how many times a year I go through Z as in zebra, Y as in yak, N as in Nancy. Uh I'm always having to spell it for people and you don't want that in your life if you can help. Uh (laughs) Oh boy. Oh my goodness. So, so with um, the things that you guys have got going on now, so you've, you've um, um, just curious, how big of a staff do you have now? Uh, yeah. So in the, pa- <laughs> in the past couple of years, we've grown for the majority of the time that we've been together. It's been me and Miranda, maybe about year three or four. I don't know. I'm terrible with timelines. We decided, okay, we're gonna have an assistant. We'll pay them whether or not we use them or not. And that'll force us to use them. So we started having an assistant. And then a couple of years ago, we said, you know, the dream here is for us to do what we do best. And let other people shine in there. We can do all the things. I mean, we've been doing this for a long time, but we wanted a kind of a shift in our energy. So we now have um, over the years, we have we have full time and part time staff. We have four accountability coaches who work in our accountability program, um, and they are amazing. And then we have. Mm about four or five full-time staff Wow! as well. And then, um, yeah. And then we have a couple of contractors, but mainly we have employees and yeah. And it's been, team. it's been really amazing to find other people that have the same passion for the work that they really have a passion for mental health. Um, even one of the people that we brought in, that's our community manager, Um, we got her as part of a marketing, um, internship and had her come in. It turns out she was a burnt out social worker (laughs) who was like trying to retool and she was amazing, really got what we were doing. Um, and so we were able to do that process and, um, it's been a magical thing to impact other people's lives, to be able to provide benefits for our employees, to, you know, take it to a whole nother level of service in terms of having, uh, you know, availability and having just excellent responsiveness to our people throughout the year. Um, and we know that in order to sustain this long-term and to really change our profession, because our, our profession, there's so much that is better than it was 11 years ago. Mm -hmm. Like there is so much that has improved and 
there are so many new risks to our profession and so many like turning and pivot points right now that we feel so strongly about and that we are really uniquely positioned to help shift out of, you know, like one of the reasons that tech companies can come in and, and really mislead therapists <laughs> in terms mm-hmm. of, Hey, you can make a hundred thousand dollars just working 40 hours a week when you didn't, you know, when you're over here, we're going to do this thing um, is because we're not training therapists in terms of how to run the numbers and how to look at the business side of things. If we mm-hmm. taught them how to run the numbers and how to ask the questions, nobody would say yes to these tech companies and they would not say yes to these privacy policies and things where they are agreeing to provide therapy in places where clients information is being resold to target them for ads based on their mental health diagnosis. Like Mm -hmm. what has happened? You know, it's like a whole new thing, but people don't know. And so we really want to, especially in this next year, really help educate the next generation of therapists, but honestly, the current generation that is struggling because our graduate programs don't include business information. We include statistics. Well, statistics is great for reading research articles, Mm -hmm. but A, most therapists are not integrating as much research as they should. And B, I think everybody needs like a business finance course. And whether that is related to saying yes or no to even a, a position for a nonprofit and realizing what does that look like for me financially when I have 150 or $200,000 in student loans, mm-hmm. you know, what does that look like? Right. Oh, wait, there's, I'm, I'm not a bad at budgeting. Like this math doesn't add up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, can I get an amen? <laughs> amen. <laughs> to, all the, uh, to all that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it's, yeah. I think, uh, you know, I think so many times we go, go into, this whole world of really being afraid of our numbers, being afraid of looking at that whole piece. But once you do, it's so empowering to really kind of know, okay, this is what I need to do. This is the, this is the right decision with this stuff. Uh, You know, um, about a year ago, I was approached by one of those tech companies to sponsor, you know, this and um, the, the practice of therapy. And I said, okay, sounds like a good, good deal, all of that. But then I started looking into some of the practices and I said, no, nope, can't do it. It's just, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's just with, uh, you know, and it seemed like a great time to do it because there was such an emphasis during COVID, um, which we're still in, um, but uh, on telehealth and, and that, that sort of thing. And I just, I just, you know, because I knew what the numbers really were. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's an interesting thing. And I think we're actually, we're going to be doing a big push. We might reach back out to you, Gordon. Um, Mm -hmm. We're putting together um, with a couple of other organizations and podcasters or what have you a petition um, to start to talk about what's happening with these tech companies and kind of bring therapists together to say like, Uh, Hey, that's awesome. This is, this is not okay. And just to help educate because Every person who can kind of be educated about what the big picture is and can share that, if we all share that with 10 of our colleagues and they can understand in a way Mm -hmm. that they can see it, then we can, A, take that as an option because these tech companies couldn't come in and do this if we didn't say it was okay. Mm -hmm. You know, if they don't have employees who will go in and, and do that, then they don't have a way to go out and exploit their clients. Right. We're giving, when we say yes to those tech companies, even if it's, if it's completely like, I want to say ignorantly, you know, like just out of the, like, just not understanding, we're actually giving credence. We're a licensed professional. And when we go to work for these organizations and we say like, Hey, this is totally normal. Then it tells clients, this is totally normal. And they don't go in and read that information. It's up to us to hold ourselves to a higher standard and say, what am I really agreeing to? And what am I agreeing to almost on behalf of my client? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. 
Like, am I really giving them informed consent? Am I sitting down and saying, hey, informed consent, you realize that we're going to be taking this information and you're going to be retargeted ads based on our conversation today. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it's not exactly like that. I might be like um, oversimplifying it a little bit, but it's, it's not far off. Right. When you read the terms of service, like it's, oh, yeah. it's pretty gnarly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I can remember not to get too far down the rabbit trail, but I can remember um, in talking to this, this one company, you know, part of how they reimbursed their therapist was based on the amount of text, how much they texted their clients and how many words they used and that sort of thing. And I thought, oh my gosh, who's watching this? Okay. So it's, and, it, and here's yeah. the other part. It's not always just the amount of text, but it's, it's the amount per word up into a certain point per client. So mm -hmm. what that means is like after a certain point, if somebody needs more support than you're giving them, you now are working for free or you are withholding services to this client who needs it. What a conundrum, mm -hmm. like, what a stress. And what I just, mm -hmm. it's just, it makes me sick. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. of course the idea too, that, you know, they are counting the words and they have access to the words and there's some conversations mm -hmm. about whether that might be being used for an algorithm um, mm -hmm. to develop um, some AI, some artificial mm -hmm. intelligence in terms of providing therapy. Um, so like, I believe in text-based therapy. I believe in virtual therapy. I think there's a place for many types of therapy, but mm -hmm. I do not believe in big tech, <laughs> um, right. doing that. And, you know, there was a, I actually had a friend who called me up and they said, Hey, and it was a totally different tech company that I'd never heard of. And they said, Oh my gosh, like there's this company that I was going to interview for. And they said that they're providing, um, unlimited therapy to people for $99 a month. And, and I just said, let's just do the math on that. Mm -hmm. How does that work with licensed therapists? Mm -hmm. um, and they decided they declined the interview. They're yeah. like, no, I don't want to be a part of stigmatizing mental health and, um, and really exploiting therapists giving lovely heart. Mm -hmm. um, like it's not okay. Right. Well, more yeah. to come on that one. Maybe we'll have another podcast. Yes, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I think, that, yeah. Because so, Yes. Maybe we'll have a round table and we'll bring yes. in everybody uh, yes. all at once. Yeah. We'll have a whole group of us yeah. all talking about this petition and we'll okay. um, all right, see what folks. we can do to yeah. change the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, folks, you heard it here first. So. <laughs> <laughs> so to get us back on track. So what is going on with Zenny Me, me right now with uh, what have you guys, what have you guys got coming in the future in 2022? Yeah. Um, so we have really amazing monthly um, trainings coming in, free trainings for our community. We really want to, again, keep people coming together inside of community. And so we're paying really amazing speakers to come in and talk about issues that no one else is talking about. So for example, like not just couples therapy, but like what do we do with couples therapy and private practice? And how is that different? It's something mm -hmm. that we don't always like really talk about the nuance of. And so we're mm -hmm. bringing in an expert on that. We're talking about like, even if you do or don't take insurance, how insurance impacts the care that you give and like what you need to know about that mm -hmm. um, as a provider, we're bringing in Barbara Griswold for that. So we have lots of cool stuff happening with that. And then we're going to definitely be talking more um, about the issues of burnout and trauma in our profession. Um, mm -hmm. And we have a training, which probably maybe the re replay will be out at this time. I'm not sure when this is coming out, but December 9th, mm -hmm. um, where we're going to be really digging into what we're seeing in our profession. Because while I'm sure you're seeing Gordon, like, oh, wow, people are so great on communities online are wonderful. And then I'm sure you've also seen it where people are attacking, shaming each other, there's just kind of this like nastiness happening in a way mm -hmm. that we haven't ever seen before. And I've been doing online communities for 15 years, like a long, more than 15 years, since 2005, I've been doing online communities. And the last two years has been like nothing I've ever seen before. Um, and I more, think- it's, And we're not talking about like- this, Important conversations. No, we're talking about just general ranting and frustration mm -hmm. and like there's a displaced- 
stress. Um, we're not talking about accountability for Mm-mm. social justice issues. We're talking no. about this, this overall, like it's more than on we it's, it's like, there <laughs> is like a, people are, are really deep in their pain and frustration mm-hmm. and they just are, are venting and it's go, it's not getting taken mm-hmm. care of, you know? Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. But I think that that's just one of the pieces, right? They're the people who are venting. They're the people who are just deep in despair. They're the people that are just looking everywhere for an outlet and escape. Like maybe I'll be a business coach or I'm going to do an online course. Let me start a podcast. Let me do this. Let me do that. The core, right? People are really unhappy, burn out, and maybe just maybe our trauma has been activated reactivated, you know, triggered, Mm -hmm. what have you. And so until we really dive down deep into like what we've really experienced as a profession over this last couple of years and start to create safety for ourselves again, there is not enough online rants. There isn't enough multiple streams of income or side hustles or creative outlets. There isn't enough people pleasing we can do, you know, there isn't enough like rest or vacations we can take if we don't understand the core of what our body's telling us that this right. is a guidepost. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think again, kind of being full circle back to where we, where we started is really just thinking about understanding your own motivation behind what you're doing and why you're doing it is, is key to all of this and helping people get grounded. So, well, Kelly and Miranda, I know we could go on for hours with this conversation, but I want to be respectful of your time. So tell folks how to get in touch with you. So zinnyme.com, Z is in zebra, Y is in yak. Uh-huh. <laughs> N as in Nancy, N as in Nancy, Y is in yak, M as in Mary, E as in elephant.com. Yes. Um, yes. We have over 10 hours of free training. We also mm-hmm. have a free community Um, And it's not on Facebook. And this is something actually we have found in particular is that having a community that doesn't have ads, that doesn't have Facebook, that's not connected with personal at all, Mm -hmm. it really does change the whole vibe and energy um, of the space. And so we found that that's a much safer space. So we have about 15,000 therapists there. Um, We have a licensed and a pre-licensed community so people can go to wherever it makes sense for them for free. So. Yeah, and it's what wonderful resources, folks. So be sure and check it out, zennyme.com. And there'll be easy links here in the show notes for, for this. And so Kelly and Miranda, we're gonna have more conversations. You know, one of the things I love about being able uh, to do this podcast every week is is having conversations just like I did with Kelly and Miranda. To me, it just brings meaning, and it's so important to go deep, and I think we need to go deep within ourselves to really look at, you know, our motivations behind things. You know, we, we do, what we do as therapists day in and day out is hard work, is very, uh, it can be very emotionally draining, and it, in in just thinking about it in terms of my my own convictions and stuff, I, I really feel like in many ways it's holy work or sacred work. And um, so, ask yourself why, what you're doing, what you you know, and how you're doing it. And I think it's okay for us to uh, ask those hard questions and also reach out to the community of folks that are out there. I'm so grateful to Kelly and Miranda, what they're doing and uh, what they stand for in, in the in teaching therapists, the business side of private practice, but also having people really dig in deep to their motivations behind things. So thanks again, Kelly and Miranda for being on this particular episode. Um, it's, um, yeah, I just, uh, and you're going to hear more from them, I'm sure, uh, back here on the Practice of Therapy podcast. And speaking of having deep conversations, again, I'd love for you to join me for a focus group because this is this is some of the stuff we talk about in our groups, um, along with just really 
understanding your worth as a therapist. Um, I think that's a big conversation. Uh, I think a lot of times we undermine ourselves in our practices by thinking that we have to do things in a certain way. And, um, you know, in a focus group will help you think outside the box and be able to find your path in private practice. So be sure and check that out at practiceoftherapy.com slash focus group, and you can apply there and we'll begin the conversation. And uh, I think it might be for a lot of folks, it will be a great fit for them. And then there are some folks where it's just not a great fit and that's okay too. So uh, be sure and check that out. And also as, as always a big thanks to our sponsors, therapy notes, therapynotes.com. They're the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers. They're who I use in my practice and they are just really a platform that is constantly improving and their support is second to none. So be sure and check them out. You can also go to practiceoftherapy.com slash therapy notes. Oh, and by the way, be sure and use the promo code Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can get two months of their services for free. And also be sure and check out Blueprint Health. Blueprint Health is a measurement-based platform for mental health providers and it is a way for you to look at the work you're doing clinically and see its effectiveness um, and see where you're going with your clients so be sure and check them out as well practiceoftherapy.com slash blueprint health and if you use that particular link you get one month of their services for free so be sure and check them out so, folks, um, as we're winding down the year, uh, I think this is going to be my next to last episode for the year. And I'm going to take some time off from putting the podcast out there. But um, if I, if you haven't heard from me, I hope you have the happiest of holidays. And it's just filled with warmth and love and laughter and all those kind of good things. Um, yeah, and I'm really looking forward to being with you in the new year. Um, yeah, in 2022 not 2021. Uh, I have to laugh at that faux pas I made at the beginning of the episode. I just had in my head 2020. Uh, I guess I got so we got so used to saying 2020 with COVID and all that. So anyway, don't want to go too far down that rabbit trail. Anyway, take time to um, follow us and subscribe to the podcast wherever you might listen to it and uh, look forward to being with you next week. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.